Welcome to the Ideal Auto Factory, the place where we go over everything about RCs and vinyl wrapping. Today's video is going to be all about how to basically wrap a fender. I'm going to do a voiceover and show you the ins and outs of wrapping a fender on a Dodge Charger wide body. So without further ado, let's get into it. Make sure you keep God first. Enjoy the video. Wait before I go. I want you to pay attention to some things. Now, I don't, I, I didn't give you the tools. I didn't give you the, like, oh, you need all of this stuff. The car has been broken down, disassembled already. We already got it clean and prepped. It's already ready to be wrapped. That right there is a video in and of itself. So I just want you to know if it looks easy, there's more to it. And if it looks hard, there's less to it. So there's more videos that will come out and explain what I'm talking about. This is just me making sure I give you guys something to go off of because I know I do a lot of raps and I know I need to get my teachability up. I know I need to show you all that I actually do this and I don't just touch RC cars all day. But I really want you all to know that if you pay attention to the things that I'm showing you, you'll, you'll, you'll be all right when it comes to rapping. I do recommend that you always have a fresh blade, you always have a fresh buffer on your squeegee, and you always have a fresh mind. Because once you start getting frustrated at vinyl, you're not gonna have a good time. So with all that being said, you can take notes, put some questions in the comments, pay attention to the, the tools that I use, and pay attention to the things that I do. Make sure you, you, can, you slow down the video sometimes it is, it is sped up, slow down the video sometimes so you can see exactly how I'm using my hands or how I'm cutting. I'll bring a blade in uh, later at the end of the video to kind of show you exactly what I mean by some of the things that I'm saying. Here we go. I'm laying knifeless tape. This is the finish line. I'm going ahead and putting that inside the fender to make sure that the color doesn't show, the factory paint color doesn't show when I go ahead and lay this vinyl. And I'm not trying to risk the biscuit by trying to cut that with my knife. So lay knifeless there, nice clean line every time you open the hood. Now, let's go ahead and grab this vinyl off of this roll. I already measured. These charger fenders are roughly like 37, 38, 38 inches. Then you get, you know, your 60 inches from the headlight to the driver or passenger side door. So just cut that out. And now I'm going to get my magnets and get this vinyl stuck to the car temporarily. After that, you pop your hood. Now I'm taking the cap sheet off. The cap sheet coming off is important. Some people like to wrap with the cap sheet on, but this is not my preferred method. So. After that, I align everything, and now I'm taking my snitty, as some would call it, and cutting out a rough shape of the fender. So now that I have that, I'm making sure everything's good. I didn't cut myself short anywhere from the front to the rear, and now I'm tacking down the back half of the fender and taking half of the backing paper off and laying the vinyl down just sticking it down, and now I'm taking the rest of the back and figure off. This part is kind of underrated. Uh, you gotta get good at taking the back and paper off. You, 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 you just, it comes with time, just practice. Now I'm repositioning, getting everything lined up again, and I had a zipper come up on taking that back and paper off. So I'm repeating it just to get the zipper out, you know, re, uh, re-establishing that memory. Now I'm doing my first pull. This first pull, I kind of focus on that top half, you know, that body line there. And then now I'm doing the second pull going backwards. You know, something a little, you know, not too strong. I'm gonna go over to a new camera angle so you can see. And now I'm doing that pull again. Notice where I'm tacking at, right in the middle of the fender, on that line. And now I'm gonna pull it harder it's about 70 degrees in the actual garage, so you won't see me use a heat gun here. 
to do this. I stuck that, that front half down. Now we're working on the back half. Make sure you're pulling in a V shape around that body line. Now you'll see I'm tacking the rest of it down and I'm lifting the, the side closest to the hood. And I'm sticking things down. That right there is the corner near the A pillar or the end of the fender. And now I'm gonna squeeze you to my left, starting at the top, the very top of that, that body line. I'm gonna go all the way to the left, all the way to the left, and I'm gonna go up, tack down all of that near the A pillar. So I don't have to worry about that anymore until I get back up there to make some cuts. And now I'm squeezing to my right, all the way back down as far as I can. I have to lift up here again to get a final stretch because we have a curve down near the headlight and we need to get to that point. So that point right there, that's a good spot to hinge on, meaning you pull as tight as you can, kind of like a rubber band and you get to that point and you let it stick. Right here, I'm just popping that air out. And now because I squeezed it, everything at the top, I'm kind of getting the bottom half of that body line down. And you know, after that, it's just pretty simple. You squeeze in, reading wrinkles and squeeze it down. And because this is a wide body charger, the flares will cover up most of what I'm doing. So I don't have to squeeze you all the way down. There goes the last pull. And now I'm able to squeeze you the vinyl all the way down the fender. Notice there was only three pulls. There was a pull towards the front of the headlight. Then there was a pull backwards towards the mirror pretty much. And then I did that last pull going down. That's typically how all fenders work. There are gonna be some, you know, you work a little harder, but on a Dodge Charger, that is how your fenders go. You do those three pulls and your hinge or your main sticking point is the middle of the fender where that body line is. I'm just squeezing the rest of that down. You notice I lifted it up and then I'm squeezing to the left and to the right, focusing on making sure I don't go too far down before I, uh, I finish. I finish a squeegee stroke. That is key. And notice I lift the whole thing back up and I actually, you know, fix myself here. So it was sticking on the like hump of the flare mounts so I had to lift it off the flare mounts and boom I was able to go all the way down now I'm pushing it under the fender as well that's very key that's a very important to make sure you do that because you don't want to have pullback and then that vinyl leave you with some color so now we're going in getting a little closer here we're gonna to go to that fender that fender line and you'll see right there, there's where the bumper connects to the fender. And I'm gonna heat that up. I'm gonna heat that up, let it relax a little bit. This is what you do before you make cuts and before you go over these sharp corners. You make sure the vinyl is stuck to the basically the top plane of the fender. And then you're gonna focus on pushing it further in. See that? Now I'm pushing it onto the side where the bumper would touch it pretty much. The edge of the bumper would touch it. And watch as I go away from that point. I'm going away from that point down and away from that point to the right. Every time you have a point, you wanna make sure you push away from it. Cause vinyl likes to go and wrinkle at points. So you push the wrinkles away from those points. Here I have a basically L shape and I'm making sure I don't push into the gap or push into the corner. I'm gonna make sure I push it on both sides of the, of the fender here. And up here, the same thing, just adding heat to make sure that I'm touching the side closest to the fender that's already wrapped. And then once I push into that side, I'll focus on the corner next, and then I'll push towards the engine bay. Right here, you can see the second half of that L. 
that I'm actually pushing down on now. The first half is already done and I made it to the corner. And you can see my finger going into the corner now. And then I'll basically have that flat edge that I'm pushing down on. The vinyl's there and the knife list is there too. There's my Ofa blade. And right now the edge of the actual knife, not the blade, the edge of the knife rested on the A-pillar as I made that cut. So I pushed up on the A-pillar, had the blade's actual casing get stuck to that. And then I rode that all the way to make that cut. So the blade was completely in the air and nothing was cut in the paint. Right here, you see me pushing the vinyl onto the rubber seal and now I'm using the sharpness of the blade and the weight of the blade to make that cut just over the edge of the seal. See back there, see how I cut that? That's a little more than the edge, okay? Now watch what happens when I start tucking. Some people take it out. This car is so brand new. It, the seals move nicely so I have tucking tools that allow me to move the seal out of the way with a little rubber gasket whatever you want to call it and I'm able to basically move the seal out of the way move that rubber out of the way and tuck the vinyl in between that and the actual fender now the trick here <coughs> is to apply that heat so it all sticks and then you're going to lay it down again so that was heat applied. Nope, can't do it with that one. Gotta get the red tool. Get on in. I'm gonna use this side of the red tool here. Nice tool there. Tuck all of that in. Push it down. Back it up. We're just gonna push it all down. Now, same thing applies right here. I added some extra heat for this corner specifically. Let's get her down. Get all of that down. No fender removal. Nothing too crazy here. Some of y'all may want to remove your fender just because, you know, you're having problems like that. I don't know. I'm just making sure that's all tucked behind there because it is an unpainted surface. Overspray, I should say. Catch that. Okay, body gaps. Body gaps is, is the most underrated place to wrap. So right here, you're just going to just listen up. It's a simple, simple process, but you gotta do it right every time. So I'm going right in the middle with the one click out of the blade. And I'm pushing pretty decent. I'm pushing pretty, pretty much enough so that my blade doesn't go anywhere else. And I make sure I have a shallow angle of the blade so the blade's not too deep into the bottom. Just cutting the bottom. All the way down, like, slow down when you get close. That's when you start to mess up. There we go. Let's cut that bottom. Cover back up. Look what we got here. Now we're not done. We're not done. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to the front. We'll finish it off, okay? Finish all of that off over here, okay? So I'm going nice and easy. There's no pressure on this blade. It may look like it because of how my finger is, but I am not applying pressure. I am letting the sharpness of the blade do the work. And hopefully it does enough, but it actually doesn't cut enough. And I can show you exactly what I mean. So I pull slow, because I don't know if I cut hard enough, see? Right there, good spot. So I know that spot wasn't enough pressure. It goes to show how light the pressure is that I'm applying. I don't even know where the blade cut is right there. Same amount of pressure there. Keep it going. As I'm pulling this up, I'm getting ready for the A-pillar corner or the inside door, whatever you want to call it. Call it what you want. Give me a title in the comments. Right here, I'm going to open this door and basically heat up that corner. Some people lift it and then pull it down even more. I've done that already, so I'm heating it. And I'm heating it so much that it doesn't melt, but it pretty much listens to what my thumb tells it to do. You'll find that there's a sweet spot between almost burning vinyl 
and giving it enough heat to where it'll listen to you. You don't do that everywhere though, because then you're just, you're not following techniques. You're just forcing vinyl to go places it shouldn't. Here I'm just making cuts. Very nice, small, small pressure, you know, nothing crazy there. And notice how I cut the direction I go. I'll go from the top of the headlight to the bottom. And then I go from the front of the engine bay towards the rear. And then you saw how quick I did that. I'm showing you the full close up now because the rest of that line was knifeless tape. I didn't have to cut that with my knife. And this is how crisp the knifeless tape makes things look on the inside of this engine bay when you pop the hood. You don't get jagged edges or anything like that. And here is how crisp the corner can be when you pull the fender the way that I showed you at the beginning. I'm showing you that L shape. You see the L shape? It should all make sense now. You pushed on the, you know, the actual exterior side of the fender. Then you push into the corner. Then you push towards the engine bay side. There goes that washer fluid line getting in my way and I'm pushing the vinyl down. And now I'm just showing you everything else. Crisp lines, people call these Instagram corners, but you see how nice that looks. And I didn't remove that seal, I just tucked in it. And there is what looks like a wrinkle, but that's actually the sheet metal buckling from the factory, so it's all clean. It's all nice. And that is how you wrap a fender on a wide body Dodge Charger. Thanks for sticking around and watching that video. I know it helped out some people and I know that it left some people with questions, but either way, I'm just gonna give you this, this quick tip on the knife and then we'll, we'll get out of here and then there'll be another video to come. So let me show you. And you notice that the blade has its own casing, but then there's, look, there's actual, like an actual knife that comes out of it. So when I say that first click out, that's what I'm talking about. This is how much blade I have sticking out. You can do that, that's a little risky. I stick to the first click out. And notice this is that Ofa blade. It even says it on the back. Ofa Cutter Silver, made in Japan. So it's that JDM, JDM sauce. So the casing of this knife, the, the cutter, the casing rests on the car sometimes. The casing, you can look in there, the casing rests on the car, in the gaps. The casing, see that, that casing, it's resting. Now watch what happens when I click out. Look at that, there's a gap between the paint and the blade, and the casing is that gap creator. So now when I'm doing this, when I'm pulling the vinyl, I'm pushing down, or in this case, I'm pushing either left or right here. Shout out to the race car, the wife's car, for being a donor for this video. And I'm actually going to ride the bottom half of that down. Of course, this is rough, but when you, when you use one of these blades, oh my gosh, it is a dream. It is a dream. And look at that. It never touches the paint. It never touches the paint. So this is how you get those nice cuts. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good tips, some good tricks, some good lessons. And if not, let me know because I'm not about to sit here and act like I'm the greatest teacher in the world, but I'm also not gonna sit here and act like I don't have things I can show you all to help you out if you wanna vinyl rap, if you wanna actually learn this stuff, and if you wanna see what happens in actual shops because there are professionals and then there's amateurs and then there's the people that can do it right, right? So you put yourself in whatever category you wanna be in, but either way, when stuff leaves here, hey, my name's on it and I'm proud of it. So thank you for watching the video. Keep God first, I'll catch you on the next one.